Welcome back, all you awesome second graders. Okay, so today's lesson, if I can get it to open up the right way here. View, read most, control H. I should have got that, control H. There we go. All right, oh, welcome back, everybody. Um, so for this lesson, it's Alexander the Great Part 2, and... Um, I wanted to do my just my very very best job with this lesson so I'm, I'm trying to do a good video go ahead and let your teacher or let me know uh, how did I do was it all right did you like listening to the story and remember the point of this is just to get a chance to listen to the story ahead of time get an idea of what happens so that when we do this lesson in class we can do more more fun activities and um, it'll be easier for you to know what's going on so this lesson is Alexander the Great Part 2, and your learning target, or what you're learning to do, is to recount and describe key details or key, key ideas or details from a text read aloud or information presented orally or through other media. That's your goal for this lesson, and um, we'll get started. Okay, so the vocabulary for this lesson is, I may try to make a cool picture for this. So here's your vocabulary for this lesson. Um, important words, attention. Close observation or thought is attention. So you're going to pay close attention or you're going to give your, uh, make close observations or thoughts about it. Um, for example, my brother paid no attention to the spider crawling up his leg. A scary the next word is flung, uh, thrown with great force. For example, of the Olympic champion flung his discus farther than anyone else. The next one is invader, uh, someone who enters a place such as a count country by force in order to conquer it. For example, Alexander the Great is a famous invader of the Persian Empire. The next one is proclaim. Uh, that means to announce publicly or officially. For example, my grandfather proclaimed, my grandmother proclaimed her choice for president by wearing a campaign button. And then also in this one, you can see two pictures. This is one picture of Alexander the Great. And then here's a statue of Alexander the Great that's currently in Greece. They both, both look pretty awesome. So those are our, that's our vocabulary for this lesson. And here... I will begin our story. Put on my spectacles. Oh, and I should also, I got to get rid of my, my picture. I mean, you guys might want to see me. I'll just leave myself right down here and make myself very small, like a, a tiny cameraman. There we go. Boom, boom, boom. Come on, enlarge. There we go. All right. And then I will... Flip my computer around. I'm using my Chromebook, just like you guys. <clears throat> King Alexander of Macedonia led his Greek soldiers on foot across Europe and then by ship across a channel of water that separated Europe from Asia. As boats, boats approached the far shore, Alexander flung his spear so that it landed point first in the Asian soil. Alex, um, stepping from his boat, he freed the spear and told his cheering men, We will conquer Asia with our spears. Leading the army down the coast of the Asian Sea, he stopped at a site of ancient Troy. Here, nine centuries before, the Greeks had fought a war, uh, a famous war, the story of which had been told in a well-known book called the Iliad. Since boyhood, Alexander had set a goal for himself. I want people to remember me forever as a great hero, just as they will remember Achilles, the greatest hero in the Iliad, he said. The goal of undying fame, more than anything else, would drive Alexander onward through his many adventures. At 
as Alexander continued down the Asian coast, citizens of Greek city-states that had developed in Asia welcomed Alexander's army. Alexander will free us from Persian rule, the people cheered. We will live as free Greeks once more. Alexander told them, yes, we will live free. Yet once the, his army took over a city or nation, Alexander never gave up on his control. He was determined to set the record for ruling the greatest number or the greatest empire in history. And he didn't think that he could do that by freeing people in the places that he conquered. Soon, Alexander's soldiers found themselves facing an enormous Persian army sent by the Persian king. Between the two armies lay a river. Alexander charged across the river, calling, Follow me! With his men rushing to keep up, they won the battle. Uh, after they reached the city of Gordia, where Alexander was shown a chariot of the ancient founder of the city, the ancient chariot was tied to a pole with a large knot. The elderly priest smiled at the young invader. Legend says that only he who unties the Gordian knot can rule Asia. The priest said, knowing that it would take days or even weeks to do so. But with lightning speed, Alexander drew his sword, and with one mighty stroke, he sliced the knot in half. What a pleasant legend, he said, and then he rode off laughing. Alexander continued on to Egypt, where, which was also under Persian control. He defeated the Persian armies there, and the Egyptians proclaimed him Pharaoh or king. While in Egypt and all through his travels, he sent samples of local plants and animals to his old teacher Aristotle so that the great scientist could examine, examine them. Alexander also tried to answer the question the wise men had, hoped, had long hoped to figure out. Why does the Nile River flood in the spring? I cannot prove it without following the river all the way to its beginnings, Alexander wrote, and this I have no time to do. But after talking with the most educated Egyptians, I believe that during each spring, rains fill the lakes and the mountains of northern Africa. The lakes overflow into the Nile, which carries the water down to the flatlands of Egypt. He was right, and Aristotle sent him a letter of thanks. By the time the letter reached Alexander... However, he was back in Persia, winning battle after battle. At one of these battles, the Persians had many more soldiers than Alexander commanded. The Persian king felt so sure that the vict of his victory that he left his family and a good deal of his treasure in a nearby city. When Alexander won the fight, he marched into that city and took the king's treasure for himself and his men. After several more victories, Alexander at last defeated the Persians for good and crowned himself king of all of Asia. As he continually fought these wars, Alexander insisted that his goal was to win glory for himself and his troops and to prove no one else had a stronger force. After his success, Alexander married off thousands of his Greek soldiers to Persian women. He also took Persian soldiers into his army so that they could learn Greek ideas from his soldiers. He and his lifelong best friend even married two of the king of Persia's daughters in a double wedding ceremony. We will unite all of our empire into one great nation, Alexander proclaimed. Alexander was too busy trying to conquer more and more places that he was not able to give much attention to the places that he had already taken over. Instead, he left behind generals he trusted to rule for him, or let kings he had conquered continue to run their families, run their countries while reporting to him. Then Alexander moved on. Without more attention on his part, his grand plan never completely succeeded. At the same time, Alexander began to claim, I am one of the gods, for who but a god could do with all of that I have done? 
It was around this time that people began to refer to him as Alexander the Great. Probably he himself was the first one to say it. Always restless, he was never satisfied with anything that he had done in his life. Even conquering Persia did not satisfy him. We'll con continue east to India, he ordered, fighting over great distances and rugged mountains. Alexander's soldiers reached northern India, where they found themselves facing a strong Indian army that featured a terrible new threat. What on earth is that thing? One Macedonian soldier asked another. I don't know, replied his friend, but I've never seen anything so big. In fact, the monsters they were facing were elephants, atop which rode Indian soldiers directing the huge beasts to attack and trample their enemies. Alexander ordered to the front of his army spearmen carrying, carrying spears 21 feet long. He told them, do not let those beasts get too close get close enough to reach you with their usual confidence in alexander with their usual confidence in Al alexander his men frightened off the elephants and won the battle with northern india under control alexander and his army chopped down trees and made great wooden rafts and rowed them down the wide indus river into central india but when the soldiers heard that Alexander intended to conquer the rest of India for the first time, they refused to obey him. Men who had been with him from the very start explained, We have marched by your side and fought as brothers under your command for thirteen years. We are far from Macedonia. Please take us home. Alexander could not deny his men this request. So they returned around for home. This is when Alexander discovered that he was not a god. At only 33 years old, Alexander had lived through enough adventures for 100 lifetimes. He had worn out his energetic body, and he had built such strength that he had built into such strength as a youngster. He fell ill and still many miles from home. Alexander lay in his large travel tent with his generals gathered around him, each hoping that to become king and rule Alexander's great empire after his desk, death. They asked, To which of us do you leave your empire? He laughed and answered, The strongest. Then he closed his eyes, and he had, he had laughed because he knew what would happen next. And he turned out to be right. Fighting for control of his empire, his men would break into pieces. None of them would match his record for the mightiest conqueror of all. As a result, he would never be forgotten. He would always be remembered as Alexander the Great. Hey, thank you for joining me in this lesson. I really enjoyed um, getting to read for you guys, and I hope that you will continue to learn and focus hard on school and have a great break coming up here. Bye-bye, everybody.